Kyle Trask is a very interesting prospect. So I didn't even put him as a top 10 quarterback in my uh, prospects list, which if you want to check that out, I did a podcast with Kyle. Uh, it's on the channel. You can search that. And really the the main reason why I didn't put him on there is I feel like, well, I guess there's a few reasons. Uh, his, I, I would say the biggest one is his throwing motion, but we'll get into that in a second. But just sort of jump into the film study. There are things that I do like about him. I, he might be worth like a late flyer for like a seventh round pick or something. But let me just talk about really just his whole film and evaluate it. So there absolutely are some good. Like this one is definitely a good play. It's going to be a cover one play. It's man coverage. He has a receiver running over the middle. That's where he's going to look and try and throw to. One of the key things about this play is I keep hearing it's, you know, some of these narratives keep getting brought up that I find a bit surprising. and I don't fully understand them. One of them for Kyle Trask has been how slow he is. For one thing, I don't know if he's that much slower than like your average quarterback. He might not be fast, but he's not some like, you know, he's he's probably much faster than Tom Brady is at this point. But more than anything, he, he has solid pocket presence and better pocket presence than a lot of guys who are getting projected to be a lot higher than him. And people typically don't take that into account as much as they take just speed. But honestly, pocket presence matters way more. Watch how right when this play starts, you notice that uh, there's pressure on the edge, but Trask does a good job of avoiding it. And he wasn't looking there. But again, I've always talked about how some guys just seemingly have good peripherals. And that's Kyle Trask. He can notice pressure coming from sort of the side and step around it, which is a really good play. Now, Trask wants to hit the player that I showed earlier. He still wants to hit that guy. But the issue is he's kind of off balance. And it's a bit of a difficult throw for him to make. But watch him off balance just throw an absolute dime. I mean, that's beautiful right there. He can't do this consistently or anything, but it's still pretty cool to see that at least he can do it to some degree. But realistically, probably shouldn't be doing that too much because it is a dangerous throw. But still, cool to see. Let's move on to this one now. And we're going to stick with the sort of pocket presence-ish. This is a little bit different. It's going to be more about just how he can throw on the run. Uh, so cover two man, you see the route he wants to hit, good route against this type of coverage. But what's going to be really interesting here is, you know, I've circled the that player in white, or I put him in a square, uh, not circle. How dare I say the wrong shape? Uh, anyways, he's going to run through the inside of the tackle, and Trask is going to notice this. Watch him notice that, and he's going to then get to the outside. Unfortunately, a linebacker now reads this play, and he's getting over to try and create some pressure on Trask. So it was a good pickup from Trask, you know, right off the jump. But now he's going to have to still make a throw on the run just because a linebacker noticed that Trask also noticed it. So good job of both those two players. And watch how Kyle Trask makes this off-balance throw really accurate, and they're able to get a first down. This play actually ended up being a touchdown. I can't show the whole thing or I'll get copyright claimed. But still, very good play from Trask. Usually won't result in a touchdown if it's in the NFL level. But still, solid play. And now let's talk about this one, because Florida would even run some designed runs with Kyle Trask, which to me almost makes me wonder if that's partially why he has this reputation of being this immobile idiot type guy. Uh, I don't think anyone calls him an idiot, but people call him immobile. And uh, I think that part of it is just because they actually have him run the football. And usually when you have a pocket passer, you might not have them run with it, which means that they're going to be, you know, less likely to do stuff like that. But anyways, uh, the way it's going, or less likely to be criticized, I mean. The way this works is it's just an option play, relatively simple. Trask takes the snap, you know, they're running the option. And he, at this point, he could maybe toss it back, but honestly, it's well played. He kind of has to keep it himself and run to the inside. And I think, you know, again, this kind of surprised me because the narrative I heard was that, okay, Trask probably going to be horrible at this kind of stuff. But he does cut to the inside and able to gain some yards right here. Again, I'm not trying to say that he's Lamar Jackson. I mean, he's not the fastest guy. But I guess my real thing is that I don't care if he's not the fastest guy if it's not affecting the game. I mean, so what that he doesn't run a super fast 40-yard dash? Probably. Uh, it, I don't really care about that. You know what I care about? How much does it affect his tape? And he's a smart runner, which is way more important than being a fast runner. He has good pocket presence, which is way more important than having, you know, good acceleration, I would say, even though I think obviously speed and acceleration can be in, come in handy on design runs, especially in the NFL. A lot of these guys that can get yards on design runs probably won't get yards on design runs. Trask, you're not going to have to worry about it. At least he has good pocket presence. So I think that's very overblown. There are some very real issues though. I, I, I think that honestly, while it's one thing if maybe you have solid pocket presence 
and you know you can move around a little bit i actually think that it's kind of weird because it seems like the constant thought people have about trask i feel the opposite i trust his legs don't really trust his arm. So like, let's start off with something like this, because while I might not trust his arm, he certainly does. It's going to be, honestly, I'm almost a little bit confused as to what exactly this play was supposed to be and why there's, uh, you know, obviously his great tight end, Kyle Pitts, is going to be running the route that I've circled in blue at the end there. Uh, but Trask is running a rollout to the bottom of the screen. So I don't know what the purpose of this route is, it, unless it's just some decoy, but clearly it's not going to be that. Watch Trask. He's going to fake the handoff. He is rolling out. And, you know, at this point, there's just no way he could make a throw in that direction. Maybe if you could get your foot planted or if it was like just completely wide open and you have a huge arm, then maybe. The reality is Trask is arm. It doesn't have a ton of arm strength, to be honest. The only time you really see him get these big throws off is when he really has time to get his perfect fundamentals. And again, more on that in just a second. But really, this is just a wild decision. Watch him just off balance try to make this throw, and it's nowhere close. I mean, that was just a bad decision. And I get why he wanted to make it. You just can't do that. And he's not someone who's good at throwing on the run either. So, I mean, he can kind of do it a little bit when it comes to like the smaller stuff. But throwing far on the run, he can't do. So that, that's really what I mean. Let's talk about this one now. So this is a cover two man. And you see there is a deep route that probably won't get open. Again, two safeties deep, kind of a risky situation to throw to, especially with it being cover two man. Usually you don't want to go deep against concepts like this, but Trask is, you know, he's a gambler. He's thinking about doing it anyways. So when he takes a snap, I want to talk throwing motion a little bit and watch how I'm going to pause it right here. Watch how he gets the ball sort of outwards like that. The ball is basically facing away. This is a, it's a throwing motion that you can have success with. This is kind of what Randall Cunningham did, but it's not a throwing motion I like. It's not one that I feel confident with, and there's several concerns with it. For one thing, it just takes a long time. So when he's under pressure, and he, ha he basically is constantly having to adjust his throwing motion because when he gets under pressure, he can't take the whole you know length that he likes to take to make a throw. But also just with the length of the throwing motion, the reality is that there's just more time for something to go wrong. And it's hard to, when you have a quicker throwing motion, you tend to be more accurate because there's just, it's, you know, exactly what the pressure to put on it. But Trask kind of has more time where he has to figure out when to put the pressure on it, which just, it creates some issues. So watch this throw. And because of the pressure as well, this is just way under thrown. It uh, doesn't even really come close. And that's a bad decision on top of it. So that's kind of one example. I think that, that'll give you a good example of just seeing how the throwing motion works, but the real concern will be shown on this next one. So right here, really what's going to happen is that, you know, man coverage, that's the route he wants to head. He's probably going to have to fire it in there, get it there quick, right? That's typically how these types of things work. You don't want to take too long. Honestly, that's how interceptions happen. And watch how Trask takes the snap. And again, you know, no one's around him. So this is the kind of situation where he should be able to just sort of, you know, throw a dart get it right in there. If you saw someone like, I don't know, a Kellen Mond, he would be able to just sort of punch it right in there and be fine. But the issue is that Trask just has a much longer throwing motion. So on top of not necessarily being the most accurate, he's also not necessarily going to have the most control over how fast he makes the throw. And typically he's only accurate when he's taking some off and not making a throw very hard. When you see him trying to make these, you know, bullet passes is when he really gets inaccurate. He's pretty accurate when he can take some speed off, but on a play like this, where you have to get it in there quickly, he's kind of in a horrible situation where either he's going to be inaccurate or it's just not going to be there in time. And as you see, this is going to be the latter. Uh, so, you know, just, that's just not a very quick pass and you have to be quicker in the NFL than that. And really, that's my key issue with Trask is just the throwing motion does not work for the NFL game. And you're probably going to have to completely fix his throwing motion if you want to draft him. So, you know, maybe you could do that. Maybe you could fix his throwing motion. And now you have a talented quarterback. He, he, he does have pure talent. I just think that his fundamentals are all screwed up. He's the definition of a project. And even, even if you fix his throwing motion, that's no guarantee he'll be good. So... I'm just a little bit concerned. I'd be very wary of drafting him. Maybe if you're a team that likes to carry three quarterbacks, he's someone you could draft in like the seventh round. But the reality is he's not ready for, you know, if you're drafting him to be a backup, then basically what you are doing there is if your quarterback gets injured, he might have to play week one. Is he ready to play week one? I just don't see that at all. I really don't. Maybe, but probably not. 
Uh, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts of Kyle Trask and his game? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.